All right, guys. Figured I would go over my IFAC here. Some more content for my channel. Um, this usually rides either in the back of my shooting belt or um, if I'm just out, you know, plinking, shooting, you know, close to the truck, whatever, then this usually just rides in the cab. Um, but what we have here is the Coyote Tactical um, Stomp Pouch. Um, I think they're about 65 bucks, I think, on Amazon. I think you can get them even in multicam for that price. Um, this one is just Coyote. This was just the one that was available when, when I built mine. It is a tearaway. Sorry, I'm trying to do this here with, with one hand. So basically, if this is attached to your belt or whatever, you pop that buckle and this whole thing can tear away. Um, so this would stay on your belt. <clears throat> and the pouch can be torn away. It does have these two little elastic loops down here. Most of the pictures and most everybody that I've seen, that's where they stick their TQ. Um, for me, I just didn't want it out and about where it could either um, get damaged or come loose, whatever. So I chose to go ahead and just stick it on the inside. I was able to actually finesse it in here. As you can tell, this thing is um, packed out just about as, as tight as I can get it. But see if I can get this opened up here one-handed. I'll show you guys what's in it. Again, this is an IFAC or um, trauma pack, whatever you want to call it. Um, while I do have a couple little things in here for for boo-boo type stuff, this is mainly for major trauma. Um, and apparently one of my cats wants to come say hello. So when you open it up, here's how I have everything all jammed in here. So first thing I have is the ratcheting M2 RMT tourniquet um, with a Sharpie. Um, if you haven't seen these, these are pretty slick tourniquets. The idea behind the ratcheting one is, um, a, if you're administering self aid, if you're trying to put this on yourself and you are losing a lot of blood, if you can at least get this part of the way on and part way tightened down, and then you pass out, um, the idea is this would at least stay as tight as whatever you were able to get it, which may or may not aid in you lasting. I don't know how I feel about them. Normally I carry cats, um, but again, I'm not certified um, in first aid, any of that stuff. Um, mostly that kind of stuff, the idea of it scares me. I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. So more than likely this stuff is probably going to be used by somebody, hopefully, that is with me, that knows what they're doing. Um, one of my goals for this year is to possibly take a stop the bleed or a first aid type class to hopefully help me with some of my fears of trauma and stuff like that. So that's my own personal stuff to deal with. That doesn't mean I still can't carry some gear that may or may not aid in saving mine or someone else's life. Um, Anyway, that is the RMT, the Ratcheting M2 tourniquet. They're really slick. Um, again, I'm doing this with one hand, so I can't really show you. But you would just slip this over your, your limb, grab this piece here, this tag end, pull it tight. And then once you get it cinched up tight, then this just ratchets and clamps down. Um, so that's what's in there. I also have a cravat. Um, or a triangular bandage. Uh, it can be an improvised sling, um, uh, bandage cover, anything like that. So uh, bandana, um, just 101 uses for those. So there is one of those in there. Um, I do have an EpiPen. Um, this one, it is expired, yes. But um, again, I do have family members that have allergies, stuff like that. So I do carry them. Um, again, this one is just, it's just in a thinner case because it's meant more for, to be like a travel, whatever. So anyway, that one's in there should we need it. Um, now basically onto the main trauma package. So, um, I guess we'll just start up here. 
So obviously there's a roll of duct tape in there, which can be used for a multitude of things. Um, but that in conjunction with, I've got some of the larger bandages up here, six by threes, couple of those, um, not a whole lot in the way of, of that kind of stuff. Um, cause there is gauzes and, and other stuff in here, um, that could be used with all that. So basically what we have is these are by a company called fast track medical solutions. Um, and what we have first, this is the fast breathe thoracic seal or FTS. If you guys get on their websites onto the, um, let's see here if I can get it, Fast Track Medical Solutions website, they have a crazy in-depth video on all of this stuff. Basically, this is your chest seal. Um, this is a vented chest seal. Uh, the one thing about this that I do like is the seal, it kind of has a little protective dome over the top so that if you needed to apply this and then somebody had, say, either you needed to keep garments on them or clothing, body armor, whatever you needed, um, those clothing articles are not going to impede this seal from still working. Um, so again, get on their website, watch their video on this. It goes crazy in depth on how this is designed and how it works and how that little dome and stuff protects the seal and keeps it um, able to work even if if it gets covered up. So again, if you were in colder climates or whatever and you needed to apply this and then um, cover the person up to keep them warm, keep them from going into shock, whatever, stuff like that. So basically that's um, a vented chest seal. And then they have what's called the combat wound seal. This is basically the same thing as the FTS without the vent. So this is basically just a really big seal um, dressing. So you could put this on the back if it was a through and through, whatever, to seal up the wound. Or again, if it wasn't, you know, if it, if it didn't need, if it was a, a wound that didn't need the seal, you could use this. This is, will stick to dirty, wet, bloody skin, um, anything. So these are... These are really cool. Again, check out um, Fast Track Medical's website um, for all the info and stuff on this. So, and of course, we have the NPA um, with um, a little package of lubricant. That I just tape to that to keep it with it at all times. This is kind of the standard number 28. Again, I do not have the medical training to be able to use this stuff. So, um, again, hopefully somebody will be with me that will be able to use this stuff. Um, hopefully I can get a class and be a little more comfortable when it comes to that. This little pouch up here, I do have a couple little boo-boo things just for quick if I'm at the range, whatever. Um, I've got just a handful of band-aids. Thank you, knife kits. Um, I'm a holster maker by trade, so anytime I order from them, they send me band-aids, so they get stuck in all my kits. Got a couple little triple antibiotic ointment packets. Um, I do have a couple of the uh, repel wipes. This is just more of a convenience thing. If you are out and about when the, the bugs and mosquitoes are out, there's just a couple of those in there. They were nice and flat and I had the room. I've got some burn gel packets in there. Obviously, if you're out using firearms, the possibility to get burned is very real. And then this thing is a patient card that one would fill out um, if they administered aid in the tourniquet, um, so on and so forth. This basically would be, you'd put this on there and then either, you know, toss that around their wrist or arm or whatever, um, if they were being sent for medical aid. Um, so that is in there. I think that's all that's up there. Down here to the bottom, right here on the top, we've got, sorry, pulling these out one hand, it's a bit tricky. We've got the standard, um, compressed gauze just you know it's all vacuum packed so it's nice and small obviously that would be for wound packing so on and so forth this is a version of quick clot it's called wound clot hemostatic gauze um, this stuff does not have the dangers of being left in 
long term like quick clot does if i understand it correctly quick clot basically can kind of burn and they basically have to cut that stuff out when they when you get to a medical treatment this stuff is a cellulosic um, stuff basically um, again i don't i don't have the training i don't understand this this kit was built for me by a friend of mine who had, was in he was a first responder for a number of years um, he's been in the industry forever and so he went through things with me a little bit gave me the quick and dirty on a lot of these but basically this stuff is just another version of quick clot without some of the the issues of trying to clean out the wound later on this stuff your body over a long enough time your body will just absorb this stuff if it has to so supposedly it's some better stuff um, of course we've got a couple of gloves we have a mini compressed bandage here um, basically i think this is just a smaller version of like an israeli bandage so this is an h and h so again this thing's vacuum packed it's super small fits right in there super easy <clears throat> and this pouch pouch is really slick it gives you this bungee stuff and you can weave it through like it has all of these different holes and spacing you can weave this through however you want to set it up for you um, like the duct tape is in there but all i have to do is just grab this little toggle pull it off and i can pull that duct tape right out of there if i need to for you know again sealing up a wound or or whatever and then here in the bottom in this i just have an emergency blanket um it's just a, a super flat one so and then that is that's it so again this pouch is really nice it stays really nice compact it doesn't let you overpack it so you're not carrying a bunch of stuff again this is meant to be um carried or worn on my shooting belt so i don't want it to be too intrusive but as you can tell there's a lot of stuff in there um some of the stuff i added like i said this kit was built for me had most of the stuff i added the band-aids and the burn gel and um and the insect repellent i added the EpiPen, I added the cravat. Um, so yeah, and again, obviously these TQs, this pouch is meant to have your TQ ride down here. Um, I just didn't want it out in the open like that, so I chose to just shove it inside. Like I said, I had the room; it it worked out that I was able to squeeze it in there. So not a lot, but this this could uh, this could be everything if you needed it. Um, so that's. That's what I got. Now I get to try and stuff it all back in there. Um, I know I kind of rambled on here and took a little while to go through all that, but hopefully that'll give you guys some ideas or at least show you what I carry. Um, again, I am trying to come up with some more content for my channel. So this was where I went. Most of my content so far has been about my solar generators. If you're into that kind of stuff, be sure and check out my other videos. Um, I may even be doing some more in the future. We'll see. So I might try and do maybe some build videos, of course, there's a million of those already out there. So um, you guys let me know. One thing that I may do another video on is this crazy thing. Look at this thing. This is the Maxpedition. I think this is the beefy pocket organizer. Um, I have this set up as a toolkit, kind of a, a do-all. This normally rides in the truck, um, but it's got there's more tools and stuff in here than holy crap if it's not in here and i can't do it in here then i'm gonna need to be at home in my shop where i've got a full-on toolbox anyway but there's quite a bit of stuff in here this thing is insanely heavy i don't i should weigh this and let you guys know how much this even weighs but so i thought about maybe uh going through that in another video um but for this one i'd mentioned it in my last video that maybe i would show my ifac so this is what I got, what I had, and um, again, I've got smaller little first aid kits that ride with me, you know, all your everyday boo-boo scratch and, scratch and cut kind of video or kits, stuff like that. So, like I said, this one was mainly tailored towards um, trauma. So, that's what I got, and uh, we'll go ahead and see you guys on the next video. Take care.